All right, so uh, what happened was the recording of my voice did not quite work the first time, so I'm here re-recording the audio for this. As you can see, for that first pick, I was really excited to take a Psalm Simulacrum, because that card is the definition of value, and then I saw that Sarah Angel, so I grabbed that. This pick, I'm looking between the removal spells, so that we got Arachnus Web and Ice Cage. The on-color choices are the Dignitary and Stay Off. I take the Dignitary if I had to choose an on-color card. And I end up going with Arachnus Web, because I think it's better removal than Ice Cage, because fewer things get rid of it. <coughs> So, this pick, I'm all happy for Stonefront Phasis versus Giant Spider. Except, you know, there's a Soren's Thirst, a Royal Assassin, a Phantasmal Dragon, a Merfolk Looter, still in the pack. And I just had to go with the Royal Assassin because he is, in fact, a Stone Bomb. Uh, green, white decks used to have no answer to him. Now they do with the web, but he's still basically amazing against any creature based deck if they can't kill it. Here we get a fourth pick, Sanger Vampire. We don't question, we just grab that. Here, uh, we've got the option between, I guess, Rampant Growth if we want to stay green, Ring Flesh for on color removal. <coughs> Stampeding right on Sacred Wolf for a good men in our green color, and Spirit Mantle is probably the best white option. Maybe Manelish Veteran is right behind, but at this point, I'm definitely going to play black, so I can take the Ring Flesh and continue going with that. So, uh, yeah, as you can as you can see, the draft started off very strangely. Uh, with the deck that we end up with, Solemn Simulacrum would have been way better in it, probably because that card's also just the sickest card ever. I had it in a uh, sealed once, and it was unreal. So anyway, so at this point, I decide I'm looking between the Zombie Goliath. Demonic Tutor. I mean, Bang Truckers is an okay red option. I mean, he's, I don't think he's amazing. He certainly has his uses. He's very good against phantoms. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cough for some reason. And he has its utility against uh, small creature, fast creature decks. If you, you can block. And uh, it hopefully triggers another guy. He's great with, you know, Kite Shield and uh, anything that pumps toughness. Like Spirit Mantle is pretty sick on him. I go with the Diabolic Tutor because... I mean, I would want to tutor up Sanger Vampire and Royal Assassin. And that seems definitely worth taking the pick there. At this point, I'm probably looking to go black-white, as awkward as the mana ends up being. Because Demonic Tutoring for a Sarah Angel is pretty sweet, too. And, yeah. Royal Assassin is just an unreal card. There are a lot of answers to it, though. You've got a uh, Soren's Thirst, Ice Cage... <clears throat> well, anyway, so here we've got some nice aggressive red options. We've got this Arsonist. As a, if I was already in a red deck, I would take Arsonist or Scepter of Empires if I was in black, red, Bloodthirst. <coughs> but I go with the Siege Mastodon. It's, uh, it's on color, and it helps us get to our bombs. So here's between Act of Treason and Mighty Leap. And I don't know if you know this, but I love black, red. And so, Mighty Leap is good, but I don't think it's that much better than Active Treason that I wouldn't just take the Active Treason, because I can pick up some white combat tricks later, whether it's Stave Off or that. And so I go with the Tormented Soul to continue with the black cards and start getting into this Bloodthirst deck, which this Goblin Arsonist fits nicely in. So now, here I get the choice between Fire Slinger, Vampire, and Crimson Mage. This was the, um, I believe this was the pack with Royal Assassin in it. And so... I go with the Vampire, because at this point I want to start getting some good Bloodthirst creatures. Uh, I think I take the Bear here. And I'm not, I haven't drafted the deck before. Oh, I have drafted it once before, and it was, it only had two Bloodthirst creatures. Yeah, Bonebreaker Giant's a nice thing to get late. <coughs> anyway, I drafted the deck once before, and it was more around the act of a treason and just aggressive creatures. It only had two Bloodthirst creatures, I think. And so, trying out the actual archetype, I was unsure whether I should pick up the enablers first, because the enablers aren't very good outside of Bloodthirst. Like, the Goblin Fire Slinger is pretty terrible outside of that archetype, and the Tormented Soul is okay with uh, auras, but I'm still not convinced that auras are an actual good strategy. You just set yourself up for being two-front all the time, and it turns people's Aetheride Epson Unsummons into 
actual card advantage in addition to being a tempo advantage. But I, that being said, I would probably play some number of Dark Favors if I had a sufficient number of Tormented Souls. Uh, but I'm just trying to draft this Bloodthirst deck. And I don't know whether I want Enablers or Bloodthirst guys. And I think the Bloodthirst guys I should pick higher simply because they get better. They're better in other just aggressive decks. So I haven't reached any conclusions, but that's my thinking right now. Here the pick is, uh, I wish I could pick up that Vampire, but I take Soren's Thirst over the uh, Ring Flesh <coughs> because it uh, kills more things and gives you a nice boost. So here I divide between Pentavis and Blood Ogre. Obviously, if I was still in my black-white bombs deck, I would slam the Pentavis here, because it's simply another bomb that's great in the late game. But, I don't know how often I want to live to 7 mana. And, at this point, I really just want to get Bloodthirst guys. And Blood Ogre is definitely one of the better Bloodthirst guys. Having both First Strike and being a 3-3 three, three for 3 is pretty insane when you're trying to be an aggressive deck. Like, he'll just... He'll, slam through armored war horses. It's very difficult for your opponent to block him effectively, and if you get a few more tricks like ring flash or even in sit, just burn spells, he becomes very difficult to block at all. So I eventually decide, as awesome as Pentavis is, uh, I'm just going to go with this Blood Ogre. And I really hope to table a ring flash, but Goblin Grenade is an option if I get a few more Goblin Arsonists and stuff like that. So here, I really want to take that other Blood Hooger and the other Dust Hunter Bat. This is a, an awkward problem that I've seen while drafting, is that you still take good removal over basically good Bloodthirst guys, and you usually get one or two in the pack, so it looks like it's awkwardly open. Take Dragon Spell Summit, because if there's one thing I love, it's being able to cast my spells. And I already am trying to support a double black. If I want to get early guys out, then uh, I'm going to need to get Dragon Skull Summit to help do both. There, the pick is uh, him the <clears throat> well I'm just going to skip over the child of the night pick and go obviously I love getting uh, devouring swarm because it goes well with the active trees and it's good with our goblin arsonist and at this point I decide I'm just fully in the black red deck because you know I've got the dual land I've got a sufficient number of bombs in those colors I'd say between the uh, Sengir vampire and the royal assassin we should be all set and then we've gotten a few good removal options. I'd obviously love to get a Doomblade, or two, or three. Three Doomblades would be sweet. Unrelated to all of this discussion, I was at a uh, at a local draft, where uh, here I think I take Lightning Elemental, simply because Boneburger Giant is just a way better 5-drop. Zombie Infestation's card disadvantage, and I have... I don't really need it. Like, 2-2s two aren't very good. If I had a Lord, I'd probably think about taking it. But anyway... And I get past a second pick fireball, and I look through the pack, the rare's still there, uh, there's three uncommons, so I'm like, well, great, what foil rare did this guy get? Because there's, I mean, I'd take mind control over fireball, maybe? It's actually a really tough pick, we decided. Uh, here I go with the second tormented soul, uh, because I want to get the second enabler, so that way I can just more aggressively take uh, other bloodthirst guys. Anyway. So I get this second pick fireball, and I'm trying to figure out what foil rare he would have taken. And I play this fireball in my blue or my white blue Gideon Jura Flyers deck in a ten man draft pod, which was miserable because we only played three rounds, which meant that me going two one couldn't get first or second. Anyway, and we talked to the guy afterward, and he's like, "Well, I took Doomblade over it. Here, I just take a Blood Rage Vampire. I need more guys." So like I took a Doomblade over it, and we all immediately say there's no way that's the right pick, for multiple reasons. Uh, the first one being that I think Fireball is actually just a better card than Doomblade, because much like Doomblade, it's removal. I take Goblin Tunnel because it's better to get guys through when you have Bloodthirst than not. Anyway, it's a removal spell, much like what Doomblade is. But in addition to that, it can be card advantage when you split it up and kill two creatures, or it can finish the game for you by killing them. And then the other major reason is that you're going to play Fireball in your deck no matter what. And so, and then after that I got to thinking, if I was given the choice between Doomblade and Fireball in this deck, what would I take? And the answer is still Fireball. Then the question is, what would you take in a control deck? And the answer, I think, is still Fireball, simply because you, if you want to stop a, an aggressive start, there's no better way to do it than killing two X1s for four mana. 
So I think almost at every point, Fireball is better than Doomblade. Oh no, did my computer just fall asleep while I was recording? Okay, we're back. Uh, I missed what that pick was. It was probably something irrelevant. I took Negate because it can counter my active trees and burn spells. Took Hideous Visage because I could potentially get guys through. Anyway, the whole point of that story was just some Dirtle at my local store took a Doomblade over Fireball and ended up getting first, which pissed me off. But he also ended up having, you know, double mind control, triple Doomblade. But I got a Gideon Jura out of the draft, so that was good for me. Anyway, back to this thing. Uh, we can take Soren's Vengeance, and by that I mean we are slamming the Sengir Vampire. <clears throat> the interesting question this brings up is whether a 5-5 five five for 4, admittedly conditional, is better than a 4-4 four four for 5, but that flies. And I'm pretty sure you almost always want to take the 4-4 four four for 5 that flies, because the 5-5 five five for 4, they can double block, and yeah, that's card advantage, but it's entirely possible that you use two guys that are just not going to be relevant later in the game. And the fact that they can chump block it means that it's less likely to get through. And the fact that there are a lot of ground guys that are just bigger than a 5-5 if you're playing against, say, green. Whereas uh, aerial guys, there's not that many that beat that. So this pick was uh, annoying. There really wasn't that much for us. I just took Rusted Sentinel. It's a 4-drop. It's got 3 power. It's, uh, it's got 4 toughness, which can be relevant. But it's not that important. And here we get a third pick Doomblade, which we will happily take. It's very sad that we're passing this shock. I really hope we wield this distress. And we're also passing Giant Spider Merfolk Looter, but not much we can do about that. Just save our Doomblades for them, I guess. And then we got another Doomblade. Uh, we're taking that over Soren's Thirst, because it is obviously better. I guess it's not obviously better. But I'm pretty sure Doomblade's better than Soren's Thirst. Uh, in terms of just being a pick almost all the time. So it's just more difficult to cast and can kill fewer creatures. And it can kill wor only kill worse creatures. Whereas Doomblade is highly versatile. Obviously it doesn't kill much, do much against black. Uh, here we take Bloodseeker over Warpath Ghoul. Blood Warpath Ghoul, and, uh, you can get to this awkward situation where they say they have Amph and Cutthroats. Or, uh, I mean, just trades with Armored Warhorse. It just trades with Goblin Piker, whereas Bloodseeker does damage to them without even you needing to attack. So he's great in this sort of deck, because he'll end up doing like 3 or 4 damage by himself, which is exactly what you want. Uh, here, I could hate Brundlebore, but I've already passed a few, and it's not really that bad, good against me. Like, he slows me down, but uh, I just take Disentomb, because being able to rebuy Sanger Vampires is pretty sweet. Here, I decided that Blood Ogre is the better Bloodthirst guy than Dust Counter Bat, although in retrospect, uh, our two-drop slot was looking pretty light, and we probably should have taken this Dust Counter Bat here. But uh, I decided the 3-3 three, three First Striker is probably enough better than a 2-2 two, two Flyer for two, that I just take it. Like, it's got more power. It's basically what it comes down to, and it's a lot better on its own, just as a 2-2 two, two First Striker for three. And he, like I said, it combos well with our Ring Flash and our Incinerate. Uh, to be able to take down larger creatures and Zorn's Thirst. <coughs> as well as the bat was there, I didn't actually get any bats in this draft, and I'd like to try them out, because the curve of Tormented Soul, Bat, Blood Ogre seems almost unbeatable. Unless your opponent, you know, goes Ring Flesh, Zorn's Thirst, uh, Four Toughness guy. But we'll ignore that situation. Ugh. <sighs> It is almost 3 in the morning here. Anyway, we got a late Consume Spirit. I decided at this point no one's playing black. Consume Spirit's pretty sweet. It's kind of like Fireball for our deck. Uh, we tabled the Minotaur, which is awesome, because he's a 5-5 five, five for 4. I don't know if you know this. So we slam that right into our deck. Yep, so it's about 3 in the morning. I'm kind of tired, but I decided I'd post this draft before I go to bed. And by that, I mean I don't want to sleep. I've been waiting for Trandal Fireball to update, but they haven't. I'm going to check them again real quick. No, oh, look at that. No updates. Anyway, so here I'm presumably talking about how awesome Consume Spirit is. Then I finally decide to pause it. Uh, what do I do here? I think I just hate a card. Like, I'm never playing Wall of Torches. Probably should have taken Divine Favor. 
No, I take Ice Cage, because it's a, a blue removal option for Royal Assassin and Devouring Swarm. I was like, Divine Favor is good against me, but I can burn it in response. Here, I hate the Brindle Boar. <coughs> or they can't attack if I have Royal Assassin out, etc., etc. It's entirely possible I can also just ignore it between Torment Souls and big guys. The Scepter of Empire's Light's pretty good. I definitely, we got three enablers now. Yeah, got a grenade, get there. And I'll take that Kraken's Eye in case the Mono Blue deck decides to gain a lot of life against us. Best card of the game. So, this is what the deck looks like. I put in these uh, 25 cards. Obviously, put our spells down there. We have a fairly solid creature base. And so, we're definitely not cutting our 5 drops just because they're 4 power, and we're definitely not cutting any of our 1 drops. So, it comes down to our 2 drops. All the 3 drops, I think, are solid too. Like We, we just want those Bloodthirst guys because that's the whole point of our deck, and they're pretty sweet when they're active, and we definitely need Devouring Swarm and Royal Assassin's a bomb. I determined that the Goblin Tunneler activated Devouring Swarm, Child of Night, Bloodseeker, and Arsonist, which I didn't think was good enough. I determined the Rustin Sentinel comes into play tapped, and I guess just really didn't help us that much. Uh, yeah, it's like not better than any of the other cards. It might be as good as a Blood Ogre, but I don't really think so. Like, Blood Ogre can kill things like, uh, Stuff in, like a Sacred Wolf Enchanted with a Dark Favor or something. Uh, I definitely go Heavier Black because all of our double spells are black except for the Gorham Minotaur. We definitely want double black early for our Soren's Thirst Tormented Soul, and we definitely want a lot of black for Consume Spirit. So I go 9 6 1 with the. Sorry, I go 10 6 1, the one being Dragon Skull Summit. So giving us 7 red sources and 11 black sources. So that is the deck. I'm happy with it. We do have a, a good mix of removal. Uh, I would have liked a few more two drops. Like if we were able to pick up Dust Hunter bats in some of the more empty packs. Like, uh, I mean, I just wish we had like a Dust Hunter bat instead of a Blood Ogre and another Minotaur. Or sorry, instead of a Blood Rage Vampire and another Minotaur instead of the Giant. But I really can't compl <laughs> complain too much. <laughs> Anyway, so that's the draft.